My name is Eric Wielander and welcome to Wendy Tech, a channel all about smart home tech in the Apple ecosystem. Today we're going to talk about what on earth is a HomeKit hub? Why do you need one? How to pick the best HomeKit hub for your setup and how to optimize it to keep your HomeKit home running reliably. What's a HomeKit hub? Now, unlike a lot of other smart home ecosystems, HomeKit operates a lot on your local network, meaning all of the networking or things that happen inside your physical home. But when a HomeKit hub is there, it serves as the central command center to talk to all of those accessories and manage changes with scenes uh, and, and other things around your home. And that really gets to why do you need a HomeKit hub? Well, Technically, you can set up a handful of accessories with the home app and control them via your devices, but then again, think back to the local network. If your device like your iPhone leaves and then you're at the grocery store or you're on vacation halfway around the world, when you have a HomeKit hub, then you can talk to the HomeKit hub over the internet securely. And then that will talk to the accessories inside your home to make changes of what's turned on and off. And then if you ever want to set up any automations, most automations you want to do in HomeKit, they need a HomeKit hub in order to trigger them, especially when your other devices aren't home. That way at 9 p.m. or whatever you set of different things, while you're away or home, it's your HomeKit hub making all those automations happen without you having to think about it. So one other thing to clarify is that uh, you might have accessories from companies like Philips Hue or Lutron Cassetta, and they use what's called a HomeKit bridge to talk to all of their accessories. And that's because they've often set up some other wireless frequency other than Bluetooth or Wi-Fi that their devices talk on. And so then you need this bridge in your home to then talk to those accessories and link them back to HomeKit. But that's not actually a HomeKit hub. That's a bridge slash hub for that specific manual manufacturers products. Uh, you know, so Acara, Lutron Cassetta, Philips Hue, those folks make these and often call it a hub in certain cases, but really what HomeKit considers it as a bridge between HomeKit and whatever uh, setup or, you know, ecosystem is it, that is. So what device can you and should you use for your HomeKit hub? Now, Apple uh, allows you to use an Apple TV, basically any of the ones with the App Store. So if you can, ha if you have the App store on your Apple TV and you can go install other apps. That's the one that, you know, can, it can also be a HomeKit hub. You can also use an iPad, uh, although Apple recommends that you have it regularly connected to power um, and it never really leaves the home in order to be a reliable HomeKit hub because you obviously want it around. And I also think that it should stay in the same place more or less. The other thing I would say is make sure that it is able to run the latest version of iOS. So iOS 13 was coming out this fall. If your iPad can't run iOS 13, then I don't think it's a good idea to try and make it your HomeKit hub. The other device you can use is a HomePod. But one of the things you need to consider as you're picking your HomeKit hub is location in your home. HomeKit doesn't understand how your home is laid out. And what you want ideally is a HomeKit hub that's as central as possible. So something that's not tucked away in a closet or you know surrounded by a lot of wireless interference like brick walls, TVs, refrigerators, microwaves, um, you know, other wireless devices like a like a Wi-Fi router or something like you you want it to be as far away from those things as possible. Otherwise, you might have some issues with your wireless connection, and we'll talk more about that in a second. But that's really what I like about using a HomePod is because for a while when we were using the Apple TV, it was in an entertainment center where the Apple TV actually was kind of separate from the rest of the entertainment setup. And so it wasn't really getting a lot of electronic interference from all of that stuff. But then we decided to change and wall mount our TV when we kind of reorganized the living room. And then I hid the Apple TV behind the television in the, in the wall mount. And that meant that it had this giant TV between it and basically everything it was talking to. So HomeKit uh, started to get a lot less reliable in terms of communicating with other devices on the network. And that's one key thing to note here is that uh, you might see certain sensors or even now Philips Hue has a line of light bulbs that do this that communicate with your uh, setup or can communicate via Bluetooth. Um, so HomeKit accessory can use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 
or uh, some proprietary uh, connection via a bridge. When you have a HomeKit hub set up, that Bluetooth connection is maintained by the hub. So you can't have these Bluetooth sensors being too far away from where your hub is. And obviously the more interference you have, or potential interference you have around your hub, as well as those sensors, means the distance can't be as far away from the HomeKit hub. Now that's really what I think is the best part about an, a HomePod is it's just inherently a device that you're you're not going to put, you know, surrounded by a bunch of electronics. Ideally, it's just going to be, you know, sitting somewhere uh, on its own and and kind of separated like we have ours on an end table in the living room and yeah, it's kind of close to some other things, but it seems to be a good enough location for us. And so, you know, I was initially not super excited about the HomePod. When I first bought one, I actually ended up returning my first one. I didn't see a lot of practicality in it, but now that I've gotten really into HomeKit, I think beyond just having it as a speaker, it works as a really good hub uh, for your devices. The one downside of using a HomePod as a HomeKit hub though, is that unlike you know the Apple TV can connect to your network via an ethernet cable. Uh, so you'll need to have a strong Wi-Fi connection as well, wherever you put the HomePod, so that it can get onto your network and communicate with everything that way as well. So when you go into the home settings in the home app, you might see multiple hubs listed and one to be active and the others uh, to be in standby mode. Um, or you might also see disabled. Be cautious about what devices that are potential hubs that you have on standby. Now what standby means is that if your hub fails, HomeKit can automatically switch over to another device as your hub. But keep in mind, HomeKit doesn't know the loca locations of devices in your home um, other than just like their room name. Like it doesn't know the layout of your house. So it might switch to a hub that has a way less optimal location for Bluetooth and wireless accessories um, due to some just network hiccup. And then you don't realize it and then all of a sudden your accessories aren't communicating as well with HomeKit. So you might be better served to disable certain devices like certain Apple TVs that maybe are further away from the center of your home um, or, or hidden in a lot of like other entertainment electronics, like disable those as home uh, potential HomeKit hubs so that you don't get HomeKit accidentally switching to those when it's not going to get optimal results. I had this for a while where my HomePod was actually down in the basement in my office and then my Apple TV upstairs was the main hub and that was working well, but then for whatever reason, and sometimes if you know something happened where the network powered on or off or something the apple tv would not it would cease to be the home kit hub and then my home pod in the basement would become the uh hub and the problem with that is of course the home pod was down in the basement so then accessories on the second floor of our home were having difficulty communicating with the home pod because it was a long ways away and the home pod really wasn't set up where it was to be a hub. So what do you currently use as your HomeKit hub? And maybe is this video giving you any ideas about ways to kind of restructure your hub setup to get the best results from your HomeKit home? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks again so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. And I'll see you in the next one.